Okay, so now we're live. So hello everyone. So let's start this panel. Uh, my name is Mauricio Prazak. I'm from Brazil. that we have here. And we'll be talking a little bit about uh, how technology can facilitate access uh, for international markets, especially to small and medium enterprises. And, and so uh, for us not to take so long, I, I will uh, start already uh, calling uh, one of the speakers, uh, which this one is a huge friend of mine, which is uh, Mili Voj. Is the founder CEO of Atron Gate, and so Millie, tell us a little bit about what what you've been doing, and a little bit about what we want to share uh, on this topic. Okay, um, my name is Millie Boyer Batista. Um, as uh, Mauricio already uh, said before, uh, we are friends, <laughs> and as well in the the, the thirty and around is of course Jitin, so long time. We're all together working on these solutions, the other two gentlemen I studied a little bit. So it's a great pleasure being with you here and uh, sharing uh, this wonderful time, and as well as I see it as an important one. I mean, what I'm doing is, I'm, um, my job is project management. I'm uh, connecting networks with special interests. We are working on projects with uh, small and medium enterprises, but as well, uh, social media platforms, communication channels, gaming platforms, um, certification, schooling, you, uh, connecting as well universities, art. Um, that's why it's especially cool to see you here. And I'm so curious to, to hear your part. Um, that's the part I'm working on. And I have the great pleasure as well having you guys as well cheating with me. Of, who are enabling us to do what we need to do for our clients and projects. And this is uh, a great thing working with uh, Akubix Technologies uh, because we are in the front line. We are, we are meeting people on a day-to-day -day basis and especially now in the COVID time as well, like we do work with the Ibra Institute. We're meeting people until we see how the medium and small enterprises, and uh, that's that's my theme for today, um, how they try to enter the market or re-enter the market, and and how they import how important they are for the market. I mean, they're much more important than the, these super giants we see everywhere. Of course, they have more power, more money, but the, the economy is not held by three big companies. They're sold by the five million. Smaller companies, uh, uh, for example, in Brazil or the 30 million in India, they are making, they are making the market, and we are always paying the attention. What are the big guys doing? And do forget how important the smaller companies are. And on my part, my job is is to find solutions how we can make it as easy as possible to enable these people joining the world markets like building trust through certification processes, building uh, ideas, structuring ideas, um, how to overcome language barriers. You know, we have at the moment this, uh, this situation where we um, have on the one side India and the other side Brazil, uh, structuring new ways of, for small and medium enterprise structures and uh, we would love that much more are working together all these networks are working together and uh, believe it or not uh, one of the big barriers are the language barriers you know for small simple um, ideas or uh, tools you need to connect to the other you know and the, the what we see now and this is something I, I can only talk and it's not for doing promotion for another company, but we see what we see now is, you know, like solutions which we are enjoying to um, Akubits Technologies, you know, who are building exactly these tools, uh, things like uh, which we are using in the practice, like um, um, my, my body, like a, a small uh, AI solutions, you know, which are not filtering billions of information, but 
specific to that what you need as a small and medium enterprise and make enable these small groups and medium groups um, to create strategies for the market without investing millions of dollars, enabling them to simple ways uh, overcome language barrier to to um, um, bots, communication bots to, to uh, artificial intelligence, machine learnings. Uh, but as well, when it comes to trust, I mean, for a lot of people, maybe it's a, it's a marketing tool when we talk about blockchain, but still it builds um, or it helps us building the basis for uh, the integrity of the information we are exchanging. And that's not just for the for payment mode, it is much more for certification, supply chain management, and, and quality certifications. If I know that the other side already passed the process, which I'm requiring for me to be able working with him, and he has a certification in his hands, which passed through the same way, I don't need to speak so much with him. If the product looks like I have to, and if the price fits, and the possibility and the availability is given, then I can shoot, you know, so that, and we had this group, big, big pleasure uh, developing these kind of tools with the Kubits and with Ebre. Ebre from the side of really speaking to the people on the market with the real problems, coming with real problems to us, and um, being in the middle, connecting them to, to teams of Kubits, you know, and then really creating on a fast, simple way than the solution. And, and I really appreciate that. And I hope it's not so much of marketing for that, what we are doing, but, but Mauricio was asking me to explain what I'm doing. So I would love to give the word back to Mauricio if, it, uh, if that um, answers your question. Uh, that's great, Millie. Thank you so much for your input. And uh, so let's go directly to, to Jitin. Uh, Jitin is the CEO of uh, Vakovic, as uh, Meli said. So Jitin, uh, you're going to talk a little bit about uh, blockchain and how it uh, can foster access to international markets. So the, yeah. the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mauricio. Uh, first of all, and thank you so much for inviting me to this panel. Really appreciate it. And hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting all of you here. Uh, and you know, I'm very, very excited about you know the, this particular panel discussion. Um, as Maurizio and Mili mentioned, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Acubits, which is a global uh, you know emerging technology focused solutions provider. Uh, we are in like you know 11 different markets right now, uh, with over like you know 400 people across all these 11 different countries, and uh, which is just the services side. And you know, we also do uh, investments. So we have a fund which actually invests uh, uh, you know does seed stage and you know stage investments and startups uh, and then we also have a you know research lab in a, which is in multiple you know in two different countries uh, focused on artificial intelligence blockchain and you know biological semiconductors and you know with Millie you know uh, we're also sending you know the world's first uh, I think you know one of the world's first uh, blockchain ledger to the space you know think about it as the start links for uh, you know value exchange right so Starlinks is more about, uh, you know, the Starlinks from SpaceX, right? You know, which is more about, you know, taking internet to the space and, you know, making it accessible to everyone every single time, right? But if you actually think about it, we do not have something for value exchange, which is even more key and requires more efficiency, reliability, right? And then security as well. So that is what we are trying to kind of build across the globe, a single network, which is extremely secure so that, you know, people can transact you know, from anywhere, anytime, right, through a secure, you know, digital channel. So, uh, and, and then a bit about me, perhaps, uh, you know, history of my vocation and vocation probably is uh, AI and blockchain. Uh, I fundamentally believe that, you know, these two different technologies is going to change the way, uh, you know, we as a species function. And, you know, we as a species represent and, you know, do our day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, AI kind of defines who we are and, you know, help us at some point build an intelligence just like us, right? Which is amazing if you think about it. For the first time in the history of any species in this planet, you know, we are able to build an intelligence, you know, smarter than us uh, or, you know, I, I don't know, maybe right now dumber than us, but, you know, probably smarter than us in the future, which can actually get a lot of things done. And then, you know, the blockchain is a technology which 
you know, if you look back, let's just say, you know, 2000 years back, right. And everybody uh, used to transact in person. You know, I go to, uh, you know, if I'm in India and, you know, if I have to US and, and if I have to do trade in the US, I have to travel all the way to US by ship perhaps, uh, which takes at least, you know, uh, I don't know, like in a couple of years or in a couple of months perhaps. And then I go there, do a meeting, right. And then exchange the value. Right now we do not need that. We all are here, right? You know, we can have a conversation. And what if there is a tool or a technology which can actually facilitate that value exchange without any sort of limits or without having any sort of trust backing into it? Uh, so that is what I think, you know, the blockchain is, that is how I think, you know, the blockchain is going to change the landscape, the way we exchange value, uh, the way we do business, right? And cross-border or whatever, right? I think, you know, that's what change and there are like you know, a few other technologies which i believe would fundamentally change the way we interact and you know do business together right you know blockchain definitely is one of them now uh, which you know which which can actually cover a lot of stuff like you know trustless transactions uh very easy and you know uh value exchange trade financing settlements a lot of countries are actually looking at that right uh whereas in in the in the past you know we had to kind of rely on us dollars or you know, Chinese yuan or whatever uh, to do any sort of transactions. Right now, there are multiple com- countries, especially in the Middle East and all, trying out direct settlements, right? So that is independence. And, you know, that sort of liberation actually brings in more creativity and more business. And, you know, that is pretty evident by our current research as well. I mean, uh, PwC in one of their latest research says that, you know, by 2030, right, you know, the world GDP incre- would increase by 2% just because of one single technology. And, you know, we have barely scratched the surface. You know, blockchain as a technology is still in its infancy. Right. Uh, you know, it needs to get matured quite a bit. And, you know, there are so many people uh, like me, you know, who have, you know, working relentlessly, you know, to kind of push that technology forward. And at some point, you know, we'll actually get over the current constraints, which are the TPAs or like, you know, the slowness of the system, all that stuff. And then, you know, it will be actually usable and, you know, scalable. And then the second technology, uh, you know, the second, I think, you know, uh, you know, domain or, you know, the industry, which is uh, from a technology perspective, perspective is changing uh, the business landscape and, you know, making it much close is perhaps the e-commerce, right? Uh, earlier, you know, if somebody had to kind of buy some, something from China, it used to be like really hard. Right now we have Alibaba. You can just click on it, right? And then, you know, you just get it delivered to your doorstep right then, I mean, in a couple of days or whatever, which is great. And I think, you know, even that particular domain would be disrupted heavily by, you know, blockchain, because I believe that, you know, we are moving towards a completely decentralized, you know, e-commerce structure where, you know, individual people hold rights and, you know, people can actually do exchange of value or, you know, uh, import or export stuff or goods, you know, w- you know, based on that trustless system that, you know, blockchain actually provides. And then we are and, you know, the conferencing systems that we have right now and primarily we are because and I, be- I really, really believe in the uh, believe that, you know, just like blockchain, uh, you know, we are virtual reality is going to change how we interact and, you know, how we do business if you think about it like i said you know the previous analogy itself like thousands of years back you know we it it, it takes us like in you know, multiple months or years to kind of get to another continent and do business and come back right you just lost one by 60th or one by 70th of your life already just doing one deal right which we do right now uh you know and, and then we had like you know uh, uh the the airplanes right you know which kind of reduced it to let's just say you know a few hours then we you know uh, then we have like you know platforms like zoom and you know virtual conferencing uh which kind of made it even more easy right i can sit here right and then do 10 meetings every single day and you know close 10 deals which is much much easier right and uh that is definitely changing the landscape but that there is something which is still missing there so uh, while we were on the, you know, while we were on the pre-panel discussion, Maruti was telling me that, you know, telling all of us that, you know, he still misses that good old days where we, where he could go to a room, interact with people, you know, build those connections and all that, right? I think, you know, that is what, you know, VR is going to bring to the table. 
once that technology gets matured, you put up a class and, you know, all of us are on the same room, right? You still build the same old relationship. You feel how the other person is, you know, his emotions and everything. And then definitely the 3D printing, right? Which I, which I believe it would completely disrupt the product market. Right. You know, especially the commodities, all these different stuff. We have like, you know, the technology is advancing like crazy. We can even print organs with 3D printers right now. So imagine a time which is not so far away from now. You know, you order something on, you know, from your Amazon or whatever. And, you know, it starts printing on your house right then itself. You order something and, you know, you get it right then itself, even if, you know, that product is on the other market. So, you know, I, th- I believe that in these products, uh, you know, there would be a massive pivot, right? You know, manufacturing would become very personalized, even if it's drugs. You know, we see that, you know, trend right now. Food, we see that trend right now. And then, you know, I think, you know, it's going to scale to the other verticals and, you know, the type of products as well, right? And then definitely AI, uh, with which, you know, it's like having a clone of yourself who understands what you need, orders the right stuff whenever you need it. And, you know, give everything at your, uh, you know, give everything even before you need it, right? I think, you know, that those massive transformations, which is going to happen over the next 10 years, is going to redefine how we, you know, transact and live as a species. And, and yeah, you know, those are my thoughts on how, you know, uh, as a species and, you know, as a methodology, you know, the current landscape is changing. So back to you, Maurizio. Thank you so much. Okay, for that's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Jitin, thank you very much for all this. And uh, let's move forward. So uh, we have here also the honor to have Michael Ross with us. Michael Ross, which is a global entrepreneur, a professor, and a documentary filmmaker also. And, uh, and so uh, he will talk a little bit about his inputs on all this that we are mentioning here. So, Michael, the floor is yours, please. Thank you so much. It's really, really delighted. I'm delighted to be here today. I'm coming to you from just outside Los Angeles. And uh, this is such an interesting conversation because it brings together these exciting new opportunities. And I can't wait to order something online and have it print here in my home 3D. I love that concept and and I I can see that happening. Um, But we have exciting opportunities to gain access to new international markets by leveraging some of these technological innovations and transforming the landscape. I'm um, really passionate about helping companies go into new international markets, and um, I'm also in the global talent industry. So um, we have seen a big shift of people who historically have not been open to remote teams or working virtually, you know, really not having a choice and and, uh, exploring that because of the pandemic. So, um, you know, I think this intersection of creating new types of jobs, requiring new skills to be learned, that fosters additional innovation that we're gonna see, and it also demands new supply chains. And all this makes the world more interdependent and connected. So at the end of the day, uh, technology is driven by people so far, right? And I think we can all agree that the pandemic has accelerated the adoption of digital technologies Uh, We can see examples all around it, and my fellow panelists have already shared examples, and there's there's so many more. Um, Just looking at telemedicine uh, and these remote uh, clinical services offering offering support through the pandemic and people embracing that, and we're finding that that resistance to tech across many different sectors, um, and uh, that's waning, and international trade is no exception to that. So with this kind of decentralization of workforce that we've seen and we have um, all become experts at running our own organizations at home via Zoom and Teams and other platforms. And um, what, what I've seen, as I mentioned, with helping small and medium-sized companies in the U.S. grow by leveraging uh, top global talent and helping them build offshore teams, um, there's been a shift in the organizations realizing that they don't have to sit next to somebody in the same office to achieve great results. And they need the best talent, they need minimized risk, and they simply need to leverage technology to collaborate. And in the past, I think that typically has been what large multinational organizations have embraced. They really 
understood the value of global teams, but um, I'm one of my passions is helping to level the playing field a bit by unlocking some of those same resources for the small and medium sized players and even nonprofit organizations. I believe all are equally deserving, if not more so, of having the opportunity to profitably grow. So um, that's been really an interesting uh, shift. And over the years, we've seen how um, having remote teams creates incredible job opportunities in India, in the Philippines, where we have offices, Latin America. And while the U.S. office is then able to unlock new ways to grow, um, they're, they're hiring on both sides of, of the hemisphere. And it's really, um, really supporting both markets and both communities. So this would not be possible without decentralization and technology. And we can talk later, if you like, about the impacts of that decentralized uh, workforce and what that means for them. But to jump just kind of piggyback on some of the technology for a moment, I think as I look at the international trade space and trade tech and some of these uh, solutions for facilitating trade, that are already being piloted successfully. And again, others on the panel are, are really working uh, directly with some of that technology, blockchain and AI. Um, but we're seeing it deployed to AI to help with imaging as, as they're trying to cut down on smuggling and drones being used within the ports and blockchain for end-to-end -end ocean freight transactions. and reducing the time to issue letters of credit by up to 80% and and really cutting down on the payment settlement uh, timeline from five to 10 days down to 24 hours. So all of this has a, a big impact and McKinsey's Global Institute report, I believe uh, not too long ago released 10.1% uh, global increase in GDP. So not only does this affect the workforce, but it has a profound impact on the economy. So, um, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Michael. And uh, let's move forward. So, we also have here uh, the honor of the presence of uh, Shalab, who is the founder and chief uh, executive officer of uh, Trademo. Uh, he's currently based in the U.S. And so, please, uh, Shalab, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, Mauricio, and uh, thanks to all my fellow panelists uh, for uh, sharing their viewpoints around global trade, uh, uh, for enabling SMBs basically to uh, giving them access to international markets. And uh, it's very interesting that, uh, like uh, personally at Trade More, also we have been working with a similar vision on how we can really democratize the access of international markets to SMBs across the world, and. Uh, we have taken an approach of, again, using uh, technology, especially big data and AI to solve this problem. So, uh, in fact, what, whatever we are doing, we highly believe in this. And so I would like to uh, explain it uh, quickly. Uh, at Trademo, we are uh, building a global trade knowledge graph uh, with respect to global trade, especially for SMBs. There is a lot of inefficiency. There is a lot of information asymmetry in the arbitrage and Generally, SMBs today, due to several compliances, frequent uh, last we saw in, during the COVID times, a lot of compliances changed rapidly across the country, across the uh, countries. The shipments were lying at the ports; they were not getting cleared. So there is a lot of uh, change information asymmetry, which becomes very overwhelming for a small business to manage on its own. And the idea of building a global trade knowledge graph is to combine the different data sources which are available publicly or otherwise with different bodies, gather them together and build a large information resource uh, and, and, and an experience like Google uh, for these SMBs to inquire anything and uh, anytime about global trade. So today uh, we are enabling businesses across more than 40 plus countries which includes small importers, exporters, uh, logistic companies like trade forwarders, uh, even some trade finance institutions and uh, investment funds who are looking to invest in companies with significant uh, exposure to cross-border trade. And what we are essentially providing them is the real uh, transactional data. Uh, Billy talked about uh, certifications uh, which are available in public domain and 
that information can be accessed and it really cuts down the time it takes for any business uh, to take a decision uh, to identify new opportunities for themselves to price them rightly uh, to have more trust uh, in the relationships that they are developing with uh, new business partners and that is how we see it that uh, uh, data and ai can solve a lot of trust issues in uh, global trade and in spite of uh, recent uh, negative press around global trade a kind of a nationalistic view uh, i believe that this is the global supply chains which eventually helped us uh, uh, get out of the covid pandemic or at least uh, deal with it uh, more efficiently and uh, this is the time where a lot of uh, technology focus should come around uh, the international trade and cross border trade and uh, new age platforms like blockchain around data intelligence uh, should empower businesses which has largely small businesses have not uh, had access to such kind of tools uh, so uh, this is uh, this is what we are working uh, working on and uh, fundamentally uh, when we look into the uh, cross border trade uh, whether it is uh, from the procurement angle or the trade finance uh, angle uh, there are a lot of issues to be resolved uh, and i believe ai data can uh, solve those problems pretty quickly yeah for sure that's Thanks. that's great shalav and uh well uh we are almost uh, uh at the end of the panel uh, it's a shame that we don't have more time because uh, we have so much knowledge so much content here gathered in the same room that i would love to spend the whole day here with you i, I i'm pretty sure we could share a lot but uh l- let me ask you some uh, one 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 question that i w- i'd love to hear your point of view from all of you uh regarding this i've been watching the other panels and uh because of the current situation we're living in and uh, all this this uh this health crisis and everything there's been a lot of uh doom and gloom about the whole uh perspectives uh, on the world and and here basically we're speaking about how how much this 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 new technologies and this new uh, uh standards can basically re really reshape everything that we are living now so what do you think like uh will be the 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 forecast for for let's let's say like the a um, medium 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 term future like uh do you think uh, the, the companies will suffer more because of the current crisis or this technology can uh, help them to have a brighter future so it's will it be more gloomy or more, more brighter what do you, what do you believe Mary so do you want, want me to answer that at least you know share my perspective yeah if you could like all say some some few seconds about it i think it would be yeah. very nice for sure i i think you know the short term at least for the next couple of months you know as we been fake you know as been see how the market is actually uh you know behaving over the last few months as well i think you know there will be uh, you know the market will be a bit gloomy right because a lot of companies are trying to uh, adopt like you know new technologies and trying to move to the digital era even right and even when we are speaking about ai and blockchain here trust me you know more than 70% of the traditional businesses out there are still on you know normal paper based systems right or you know paper based ledgers even so i think you know yeah, uh, they are all moving to uh, the digital platforms right you know they are kind of getting used to uh, you know the virtual conferencing systems or you know uh, digital technologies right now because they at the end of the day you know the business has to run right no matter what you do it needs to run so they are actually adopting technology which is great because uh you know once they do it right and you know once they understand how to leverage it really really well one it actually brings more structure to your business right two it actually gives you more visibility from a market perspective as well given that you know you understand how to use it really really well three you know you know there is more efficiency in terms of time you do not have to travel to germany anymore you know from let's just say you know from you know australia to do business right you can just do a zoom call and you know get that done in 30 minutes rather than having to take like you know a week to travel all the way be there and you know spend a lot of t- time on you know a lot of unnecessary stuff so i uh, i think you know it- let me go to the because we have like less than a minute i would love to hear from from the others as well sorry jitin um, yeah okay yeah. Uh, but- 
uh, uh, my viewpoint is that uh, this this uh, pandemic was a kind of a reset button which really helped every one of us adopt more technology and even uh, businesses who have never really used in their day to day business they were more open to technology so the impacts uh, would be seen in a more longer term but i definitely see small businesses becoming more uh, efficient and i think that's the only chance that they can compete in international markets with larger businesses because now they have tools uh, which have been kind of democratized and given them access to much larger opportunities in a much more efficient way so yeah i should believe in that thank you michael what's your point of view on this um i believe that that it's going to take time for some of these technologies to kind of trickle down to some of the the smaller mid-sized companies um but i i'm i'm pretty optimistic about uh the future in the in the coming i would say 12 to 18 months okay that's great and milly i'm an optimistic man <laughs> and you wrote them into my heart <laughs> basically i agree to you and i i see whenever something like this happen i mean th- th- now it's a pandemic and we had it's not the first and not the last time we we will face something like this and and every time it's a big big uh boom around that and i believe in human beings i believe in our capabilities i believe uh that we are using this quality which we developed now through the technological support to make the world a better place help each other understand each other better exchange our values as jitin let to say and that we help each other to find ways out of this and create real values for the planet sustainable and um kind making everybody happy you know i'm an optimist i believe strongly in that that's great now, as i said i would love to spend the whole day here with you uh, but uh unfortunately our time is over so thank you so much for participating thank you for all the incredible and top uh, insights that you brought to the table and i hope to see you all soon and uh let's keep in touch okay thank you very much Thanks for having me thank you thank you everyone thanks Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.